Let's go ahead and pull out our notes, put our computers away. Today we will start our next unit in grammar, and then we're going to talk about book eight and nine theology, and then we'll finish by going over our homework. Uh, Susie, did you go to your lunch channel when you went downstairs? No, I didn't. Are you by lunch today? Uh-huh. Okay, so... There we are starting garments. Okay. And uh, just like last year, we will be doing burn houses on the other Jackie's favorite. Um, you made those opposite colors. When, when, we're, when we're done with that, we're gonna we're gonna have a race. You're gonna do it, just list them out, and then someone who wants to do the very possible something the very possible so you get to finish that. <laughs> All right. So we're gonna start from the beginning, um, especially since there's some of us who may not have covered this before. All right, we're gonna take it fairly slowly. Okay. So today we're just gonna be covering the simple parts and the different types of verbs. Okay. So every verb has four basic forms called the principal parts. These are basically the building blocks of a verb. Okay. And so we have the present or base form, we have the present participle, the past, and the past participle. Okay? And so, you know, the base form is typically the way we normally think about verbs, right? So for the two examples here, we have say all and we have lift. For the present participle, all we do is we usually just tag an I, we'll always just tag an ing onto the end of the verb. Okay? And then we put is in parentheses. Now, since we noticed that most of us learned about participles last year, why is the is in parentheses? Any ideas? Okay. So, yes. But why is it in parentheses? Because if it has to be there, then it would be out of the parentheses. Not necessarily imply you're moving in the, in the right direction, though. Lucas? Yes. All right. So, it kind of goes, what, what did we end the year off with last year? Do you guys remember? No, I. Yeah, you're moving, you're moving in the right direction, so let's say, say hello. Jared? Yeah, Jared, right? What are, what are, what are Jared's? Cece? They're, they're all, they think of verbs, but they're acting as a noun. Yeah, so it's a verb that is acting as a noun, they always end in ing, right? And a participle kind of fits in with Jared's too. Participle is a verb that's acting as an adjective. Okay? And so those always end in ing. So because we're using the same word here, present participle, the reason is in parentheses is because a participle is its own part of speech, okay? And when they are acting as their own part of speech, they will never be perceived by the word is. So the word is is in parentheses, and similarly, uh, a participle can also end in ed. So has is in parentheses is because they act as their own parts of speech, and so at, when we're thinking about them here right now in this context, this is just the foundation for understanding how other verbs are formed. Okay, so that's why it's important to make sure they're in parentheses, Joe. Okay. So, do you want to write down the chart? I would. Okay. Sorry. And so then we have yeah, the simple pass, which usually, as we all know, we just add ED. Okay, that shouldn't be nothing new. And then the past participle for a regular verb is just when we add ed to the end of the verb too. So past and past participle are formed the same way. Okay. Now the reason we have past and past participle is because of what we're talking about down here. There are two types of verbs, regular and irregular. So regular verbs just mean that past and past participle are formed the same way they add an ed at the end. Irregular verbs are when past and past participle are formed and spelled differently. Okay, so that's why we have both. 
Now, is there anything that seems, so from what we know about tenses, right, is there anything that seems odd about having present and past and that's it? Good. There's no future. So does anyone know why there's no future here? Nathan? Be, uh, because it's, it, uh, it can't be a simple, like that, it has to be like, uh, it has to be like will. It, it's like the present, but it has will before it, so it's okay. not principle. Right, good. So because we just added the helping verb will in front of it, it's still spelled the same as the present, right? And so when we're talking about the principal parts, we're only talking about verbs and how that changes their spelling, okay? And so, um, yeah, and again, the spelling doesn't change for a regular verb between past and past participle, but as we kind of investigate here later on, we're gonna see how that changes, right? So the principal parts just cover all the different ways a verb can be spelled, which will then help us understand how different verbs are formed and when they will be used in a sentence. Jeff? We'll take another minute or two with this one. Any questions thus far, though? Do you have lunch? I do. Today? Yeah. I don't think you're ever on Tuesday. No, I think I am on Tuesdays. Tuesday, right? Does anyone remember how to make a verb now? Oh, I have. No. Very good. Yeah. 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 Yeah, first row is principal part. So yeah, because it's the foundation, it's the foundation of the quote unquote house. Okay. So the first one is the four because the principal parts and the next three are all three. So irregular verbs. Okay, so verbs whose past and past participle forms are not made by adding ed or d to the present um, and are formed a different way. Those are irregular verbs, and that's the only difference, right? So for pre present participle, every verb there is will form the present participle by just adding ing to the end of a verb. Okay, and so when we have run, we have the past is ran. And then the past participle is has run. All right, we know the present participle is going to be running. Okay. And similarly for first. Okay. We know it will be first day. Okay. Now you don't necessarily have to write down these two examples if you don't want to because there's five different groups of irregular verbs and we're going to be going through each one. Okay. There's going to be a longer list in your book, all right, and the, really the only way to uh, know when verbs are irregular, all right, um, is to either just kind of get used to the way each of them work because there are very, there are a lot of subtleties between the different kinds. And so sometimes it's hard to really pick that up, especially if we you know, aren't great at noticing those very key and minute differences between words. Sometimes it's better for us just to memorize them. But as we continue to practice them, but also for a lot of us, it's gonna be fairly obvious just because they're words we're used to using. Okay, it's not like they're very obscure verbs or anything like that. We're used to using them. So it's not too hard to think of. So the first group. So there are five different kinds of irregular verbs. The first group, all right, and it forms uh, the present, past, and participle are all the same. So burst on the past slide, okay? So, you know, you might only need two of these examples, but this is the first kind. 
And it's also pretty small. Okay. So shut, shut, and shut, cost, but all of those are the same when it's put present, past, and then the past part is it. This is group one. I would write down at least two, um, just so that we kind of have a little bit of variety there. Uh, just to look at the different ways that the rules apply. <coughs> This one's easy because if you just write shut and cost in the first column, then you can shut the rest of the columns later.